Hello everyone, my name's Mike, welcome to Tech Car Moon, and on this channel we talk about tech uh, as well as camera gear, and today I'm going to be talking about will the MacBook 2012 still live up in 2019? Let's jump into it. So what am I talking about? So with the addition of the new MacBooks coming out, as well as the MacBook Airs and everything like that, the prices of MacBooks have never been higher, and that's all across the range, so the MacBook, the MacBook Air, as well as the MacBook Pro. So if you're a starting videographer or filmmaker, you may be thinking, well, if I'm gonna be filming in 4K, which is what a lot of clients want to see nowadays, can I afford also to not only get the camera gear, the lighting, all of this other stuff that we speak about on this channel, but also how am I gonna edit it? Because these MacBooks aren't cheap. You know, to get something half decent, um, you have to spend about 1500 pounds, which is a lot of money, especially on top of everything else that you've bought. So I wanted to find out whether a 2012 MacBook Pro, um, relatively mid-spec, mid 2012 spec uh, MacBook Pro will actually live up to 2019 4K video editing. So as you can see, the specs on this is very, very reasonable. So if we just take a look at the specifications on about this Mac, as you can see, we've got the latest Mac OS Mojave. This is a MacBook Pro 13 inch mid 2012. We've also got a 2.5 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor. So this processor is a very normal processor that you would have found in this uh, lineup. Again, you could have gone for an i7, a much higher spec, but just for this purpose, I wanted to go for the i5 because this one here is the one that you mainly find on the market. We've also got eight gigabytes of DDR3 memory as well as the Intel HD Graphics 4000. So this one here is integrated graphics, so it's nothing fantastic. It's not got a dedicated GPU, so it'll be really interesting to see what comes out of this MacBook. So now, if we take a look at the inbuilt display, this is a very, very basic display. So this one here has got a 13.3 inch uh, display, so that is 1,280 by 800 pixels. So this display here is a very very, very basic display. It's nothing like the new MacBooks that we find in today's uh, market. However, I still think that you can edit on this. And just to let you know, I've actually been editing on this for about six months. So I know that these MacBooks can withstand the test of time, but I just wanna prove that to you. And as you can see, we've also got eight gigabytes of RAM. So we've um, got two memory slots filled, both four gigabytes. So this makes us take advantage of dual channel memory. So we should find much better speeds than just having one single eight gigabyte RAM stick. So why am I talking about the MacBook Pro 2012 model instead of any of the other older models? The reason why is because this is the latest model where you could upgrade both the RAM as well as the hard drive. For me, for example, I've actually removed the optical disk drive in replace for another SSD. In terms of the specifications that I changed on this computer, I've upgraded the RAM to eight gigabytes. Now these MacBooks are actually configurable up to 16 gigabytes, which is something that I may do in the future, but for now, eight gigabytes actually runs perfectly. And to be honest, this is probably a specification uh, upgrade that you guys will probably do yourselves because to find uh, two four gigabyte RAM sticks, you can find them very, very cheap. I'll put a link in the description below. They will be affiliated, so if you do buy them, they do give me a little bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you. Now, when you buy these MacBook Pros 2012s, the two things that I would recommend you upgrade is firstly the RAM, as well as upgrading the uh, disk drive into an SSD. This will give you much faster speeds and will make it far easier to edit uh, and playback 4K footage. And to show you that, I will prove it to you right now. So let's jump in to the edit. So we'll open up Final Cut Pro. Now we've got the screen recording in the background, so obviously it's gonna take a little bit more time, but as you can see, that's opened up very, very quickly. Now let's create a new project. We'll just leave it as untitled. We'll save that and then we'll import some media. So we will take, let's say this footage just over here, and import that. 
We'll then start a new project. So as you can see, just in the project timeline itself, we've got 4K, uh, 3840 by 2160, and that's at 24p, and we're gonna be rendering it in Apple ProRes 422. Okay, so we'll press OK on those. We'll drag this into our timeline, and let's see how it plays back. So as you can see, there are no dropped frame rates. I've just dialed down the sound so that you guys don't have to hear me talk behind that. But yeah, the playback is absolutely fine. Now let's just put a grade on that and we'll again see how that works. So we will just extend that grade and then we'll just go into here. We will enter one of my presets which is this one just over here. We'll apply that onto the footage. And within a few seconds, and there you go. Now obviously I'll tweak that in a bit, but again, if we play it back with that heavy grade, we're seeing a couple of drop frames, but we can still play it absolutely fine. And this is in 4K full resolution. And we've done no proxy uh, media or anything like that. I've just taken it straight from the uh, SD card into the actual computer. So as you can see on the MacBook 2012, we are actually able to play back 4K on Final Cut Pro. So this is awesome because what that means is, is that you can pick up a MacBook Pro for about three to 350 pounds, uh, do a few upgrades, which will cost you no more than about 100 pounds. So for about 400 to 450 pounds, you can have a 4K editing machine. Now, just to let you know, with Multicam, it does drop frames. But if you're doing very simple editing for YouTube, get yourself one of these. Do not spend 1,500 pounds if you're just starting out. Buy one of these, get yourself custom to Final Cut Pro. You can edit 4K footage. As you can see, I've also put a LUT on there, a very heavy grade. I think that had like two or three uh, LUTs on there, plus a color grade on that. Um, it looked horrible, but as you can see, it actually did play it back. It dropped a couple of frames to start with, and then it played it absolutely fine. So those people who say you need a very powerful machine to edit in 4K, that is absolute baloney. Now, what are the downsides of editing with such an old machine? Well, when you're exporting, the export times are extremely long. Um, but if you're just starting out on YouTube or just starting out filmmaking, um, I don't think this is gonna be a huge issue because you're gonna be editing. It's mainly the editing process. As long as you can edit it without it stuttering too much, um, I think you can create some really amazing videos and just when you're exporting, just be a bit patient. So what is my verdict on the 2012 MacBook Pro in 2019? I think if you're looking at picking up one of these, you'll be in safe hands. There are two upgrades, like I mentioned, that you should do, and that is upgrading to an SSD. That is the first thing I definitely recommend you do. Second thing is upgrade the RAM, whether it be at eight gigs or 12 gigs. But as you saw, I was editing that 4K footage with eight gigabytes of RAM. So 16 is only gonna make it a little bit better. The other downside to editing in a 2012 MacBook Pro is the screen. Obviously, we don't have any of that beautiful HDR wide color gamut display. So in terms of color grading, it's obviously gonna make it that little bit more difficult. However, for YouTube stuff, it is not a problem whatsoever. Just chuck it on there. You'll get it about 90% there. Um, and then you can fix it all uh, onto another monitor if you wish. The other downside to the MacBook Pro 2012 in 2019 is the weight. The weight and size of this thing is a little bit ridiculous in 2019. This is a heavy laptop uh, in nowadays. And also the thickness of this, I mean, it's not ridiculous, but it, I mean, when you look at the new MacBooks, it is night and day. But if you're looking at getting a MacBook on the cheap, this is 
absolutely fantastic. It still works in 2019. It still edits 4K footage in 2019. So any multitasking, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, I think you'll be very hard pressed to find a new uh, laptop, um, let's say even at this uh, price point, that can edit in 4K so easily. Now, I do know that in Premiere, you will struggle uh, to edit in 4K with this. And also, I have noticed as well that editing with DaVinci Resolve on this laptop uh, doesn't work either. So if you want to edit in Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, uh, I would recommend you avoid this uh, or transcode your uh, footage. Um, or use proxies, so basically play back your footage a little bit better. If you're gonna be editing on a machine like this, invest yourself into one of these as well as Final Cut Pro, because Final Cut Pro is only about 300 pounds, but that is for life. So you get lifetime updates with that, or until they release sort of a major update in terms of the next Final Cut. So for a cheap package, full editing package, you know, that software will stay with you. And then when you're ready to upgrade, you can go and upgrade. But lugging around one of these has been difficult. Um, this takes up a lot of room in my bag. I can definitely feel it along with all the camera gear. Obviously, I run a lot of uh, micro four thirds mirrorless cameras as well as the camera gear and they're all very light. And it's almost to compensate for the fact that I have to carry this around. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. But until the next video, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.